I remember the night I, I, I kind of told God I was gay. It was, I remember I, I told him, and I kind of waited for the lightning bolt to strike me dead, because <laughs> I was, I really felt that split. I really felt like, okay, if I'm, I felt like I had to embrace it by that point, because everything else, my life was becoming focused on changing and not on God, and I had to change that. I had to go back to focusing on my relationship with Him, and that is just the, it's the hardest thing I've ever had to do because I love God and I have no desire to walk away from Him. And I also know what's going on inside of my heart and, you know, what's going on inside of me. It says, yes, you're a gay man. And it was really conflicting when I began to feel like God was affirming that and saying, no, that is okay. And then I was, I was really confused and it, just, it tore me to the point of almost depression um, I was lying to all my friends because I couldn't tell them what was going on because they wouldn't understand. Uh, I love them and they love me, and, but they couldn't accept me as a gay man. And it was just it's something that just tore me apart for two years as I, I, you know, I struggled with figuring out who I was. I ended up meeting a woman online through a um, chat group and she, me and her started talking like a couple times a week and she is uh, a lesbian and a Christian and that was a new concept for me. I'd never met anybody that was, that was gay and then was also Christian. And she started explaining things to me and explaining what she believed. And she never told me I had to believe what she believed. Um, in fact, she never even said, I don't, she said to me, I don't know if you're straight, I don't know if you're gay, I don't know what you are. Um, that's something for you to figure out. I'm just going to tell you what I believe. And so I remember having many, many, many heated arguments with her um, online, sitting in the library at school chatting, you know, just talking to her. Because she'd say something like, well, no, it is okay, because it's, it's, you know, it all comes back to love, and it's all about, you know, this, this is not what the Bible was talking about. And it's been distorted, and I would, of course, counter with things like, no, 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 this is what it really says. You're wrong, you're wrong. And finally, after about a year of that, she started to kind of make sense because I started, like, really thinking about, instead of just shutting her down, I started thinking, well, okay, let's just look at this. What if I applied that to my life? Does that fit? Because right now what I have going on doesn't seem to fit with Scripture. So if I apply this, okay, how does that fit? And, it fits so much better, and there was so much more peace about that. And I, I just came to a point where I said, okay, God, I don't know what's right. I don't know what's wrong. I, I just don't know anymore. So I'm going to stop trying to change this because I can't do this it, this way anymore. And if you want to change me, then change me. If you don't, then don't. But God, you have to help me because I can't do this anymore. And God really just gave me a peace about it and said, no, this is okay. I, I created you this way, and I love you this way. It's a struggle at times. Um, I like to think that I'm, I'm making a difference, you know, one person at a time, and um, by living an honest life, you know, as, as honest as I can be, um, I'm making a difference. But at the same time, it's, it's really hard to live an honest life because it is South Georgia, and there are very ignorant people that live there um, and people that would hurt me just for being who I am because they don't understand and it's 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 always walking this fine line of okay I'm with my boyfriend can I hold his hand here is this gonna be okay is am I actually gonna have to worry that someone's gonna figure this out or if we're standing next to each other, we're standing too close, is someone going to notice? And is this going to be a problem? And uh, even, even in church, well, interestingly enough, they want me there. They just don't want me as a member. <laughs> um, and, and they've told me just that, like, well, Joey, we want you to come here. Um, but it, more, it, more importantly for me, it's just I love church. And... I'd rather go to some place that doesn't necessarily accept me and still go to the house of God than not go to any place at all. I've had um, 
several run-ins with uh, different pastors, different levels of the conference. Um, starting back when I was in college and I came out in the Wesley Foundation, um, I was asked to step down from the leadership position. Um, the church I worked at, or I helped out with at the youth group with, um, they asked me to step down. The hardest part has been I, um, I left Valdosta for a little while and then I moved back. And when I moved back, I decided to try another church and I really liked it there. And I decided I wanted to join that church and transfer my membership from another Methodist church in the conference. Uh, the church, my membership is still at the church I went to when I was growing up. And, um, you know, I, I'm never there. So I just, I felt like transferring to a church I was actually at. Um, so I went in and met with the pastor and the pastor proceeded to tell me that he didn't feel it was appropriate for me to join um, because I'm gay. And I, of course, disagreed with him. I was like, I'm, a, I'm already a member of the Methodist Church. You're denying me membership so, to something I'm a member of. Um, and he just, he said on the fact that it's pastoral discretion. He has the right to deny me a membership um, based on his decision that I'm, it's not appropriate. And so I, I wrote letters to my district superintendent and to my bishop stating what happened and that I was upset with it. And they both contacted him, uh, or he contacted them, and they basically said, no, we agree with his decision. Um, we, we think it, it is inappropriate for you to join at this time. It's crazy to me that, that I, the church I've been a member of my entire life, is telling me all of a sudden I can't be a member. And it just doesn't make sense. There's a lot of people who think they've never met gay people. And so they have this idea of what a gay person is. And so when, when you come out in your church and say, no, I'm a gay person, I'm the guy that you know that's, that you love, that's part of your church, um, that loves God and, and doesn't do all of these things that you think of when you think of gay people, that changes people's lives. Well, one of them was my, my pastor from back home who I, I came out to her um, just so when I finally came out to my parents, they would have somebody to turn to. And uh, she was a family friend from uh, growing up. She was a youth minister of mine at one point. And, um, and she surprised me because I, I I, can't, I asked her to meet me for coffee um, one weekend when I was in town. And I, I remember I was sitting at the table, I had my head down, I was embarrassed to be telling her this. And um, I knew it was something I had to do though. And I remember she, the first words out of her mouth after I finished speaking was, well, Joey, first of all, I want you to know that I love you. And I think it's stupid for you to try and change. And that was probably one of the first times I was really affirmed by a pastor. And, and, you know, someone I'd known my whole life, had gone to church with, you know, most of my life. And it was just an amazing experience for me just to have that affirmation from someone I trusted so much. I think if I wasn't a Christian, I, I, I don't know what, where I would be right now, but I would not be... I don't think I'd be the healthy person that I am today because when I was struggling with who I was, uh, I got into some dark place just away from everything and if I didn't have Jesus there to hold me up, I don't know what would have happened. The, there's so many LGBT people out there that just love God so much but feel they have no place in the church. And if we just look around, we'd see we're missing a lot of people with a lot of great gifts because we push them out of our churches.